brain metastases. In this whiteboard video of our oncology emergency series, we will discuss an overview of brain metastases. A detailed written module and virtual patient case are available on learnoncology.ca. You may wish to open this and follow along with them. By the end of this video, you should understand the following objectives. Pause the video now to review them. Brain metastases occur in 10 to 30% of cancer patients. They are most common in patients with lung cancer, renal cell carcinoma, melanoma, breast cancer, and colorectal cancer. Tumor cells metastasize to the brain by hematogenous spread through blood vessels. They usually become lodged at the gray matter, white matter junction, where the blood vessels abruptly decrease in size. As a result, brain metastases are often found at this junction. The distribution of brain metastases in the brain roughly corresponds with the amount of blood flow received by that part of the brain, with roughly 80% going to the cerebral hemispheres, 15% going to the cerebellum, and 5% going to the brainstem. Brain metastases mainly cause symptoms from the direct effect of the mass, as well as from the edema surrounding the mass. The tumor and its surrounding edema can lead to increased intracranial pressure. Patients with brain metastases may present with headache, focal weakness, altered mental status, seizures, ataxia, and stroke, as well as complications of increased intracranial pressure, such as brain herniation. Up to one-third of patients with brain metastases are asymptomatic. In a patient with suspected brain metastases, the diagnostic approach includes a history and physical exam, including a neurological examination, brain imaging, and a biopsy if the diagnosis is unclear. For example, in a patient complaining of a headache, one should ask about whether this is a change in their usual headache pattern, any associated nausea and vomiting or other symptoms, and any factors that make the headache worse, such as position, coughing, sneezing, and straining. The classical brain tumor headache is described as being worse in the morning on awakening. It should be noted that this is not common, but strongly suggests a brain tumor when it is present. The physical exam should include a neurological examination to look for any neurological deficits, as well as an examination of the fundi for papilledema. One should also perform a full physical examination to assess the primary tumor, if known, and look for any other metastases. Contrast enhanced MRI is the preferred imaging test, as it is more sensitive than CT or non-enhanced MRI for detecting brain metastases and distinguishing them from other lesions. But CT may be more readily available and is a reasonable first step. Finally, biopsy should be performed if the diagnosis is still uncertain. For instance, in patients with no known cancer diagnosis or a very long disease-free interval with no other metastases. Symptomatic brain metastases warrant urgent treatment to improve symptoms and prevent neurological deterioration, particularly complications of increased intracranial pressure and brain herniation. Initial management should focus on managing the patient's airway, breathing, and circulation, as well as symptomatic control using dexamethasone to prevent symptomatic edema and anti-seizure medications for patients who present with seizures. Options for treatment of brain metastases include whole brain radiation therapy, stereotactic radiosurgery, surgical resection, and systemic therapy. The decision on what treatment to use is guided by patient, tumor, and treatment factors. Patient factors to consider include the patient's performance status and prognosis, the patient's wishes, and their quality of life. For example, in a patient whose prognosis was very poor, we would tend not to treat them with aggressive surgery. Tumor factors to consider include the type of cancer, the size and location of tumors, their resectability, and the symptoms associated with the tumors. 
For example, single, easily resectable metastases might be treated with surgery, whereas a large number of metastases might be treated with whole brain radiation therapy instead. Stereotactic radiosurgery can be used for patients with a limited number of metastases, smaller than 3 centimeters in diameter. Finally, certain kinds of cancer, particularly those that are very chemotherapy sensitive, or those for which targeted therapies are available, can be treated with systemic therapy. Treatment factors to consider include the efficacy and adverse effects of each therapeutic option. For example, surgery provides rapid reduction of mass effect, allows for pathological analysis if the diagnosis is uncertain, and may improve survival in selected patients with good performance status and prognosis. Radiation therapy can be used in patients with poor prognosis to improve symptoms, but can worsen edema initially. Therefore, corticosteroids, such as dexamethasone, can be considered to prevent this. Prognosis for patients with brain metastases is variable and depends on a number of factors, such as the patient's performance status, the patient's primary cancer, and the patient's age, or the number of intracranial and extracranial metastases. Prognostic indices, such as the Recursive Partitioning Analysis, or RPA, and the Diagnosis-Specific Graded Prognostic Assessment, the DSGPA, can be used to estimate prognosis and guide treatment. This concludes our discussion on brain metastases. Please visit learnoncology.ca for further information on this and other oncology topics. Thank you.